Good morning, everybody. My name is Michael J. Long, and um, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Today is June the 14th, 2012. It's 7.23 p.m., and thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. This thing with um, Rand Paul portraying his father to endorse Mitt Romney it, it kind of got on everybody's nerves. Um, people, that is, who support Ron Paul, who has supported Ron Paul over a number of years. Let me point out, he ran and won the Libertarian Party's nomination in 1988. He ended up being their presidential nominee, who ran in 1988, and he ended up losing, but he gained a lot of during that time period. And I think ever since then, the closest third party person to have ever been close to winning the presidency has been Ross Perot, who ran under the Independent Party in the 19, early 1990s. And I believe it was 1990, the year before the two years before the Constitution Party, which started out as the Taxpayers Party, was formed. Um, And then Ron Paul ran in 2008 after George Bush's term was already over after the Clinton and Kerry campaign and all that. Ron Paul ran in 2007-2008 under the Republican Party's primary. He didn't even win the nomination, but he gained a lot of support. However, he dropped out during the middle of the primary. And it was the same day that there were 30 states up for grabs. Probably, well, there were 30 states up for grabs the next day or the following week. So he dropped out maybe the day before, the day when the states were up for grabs or a week before. And so he went through nine states before dropping out in the primary. Uh, this was back in 2008 and 2008. Now, his 2011 and 2012 campaign, he's made amazing strides. And, you know, this thing with Rand Paul kind of upset everyone a little uh, amongst the Ron Paul supporters. But I don't think that Ron Paul is going to endorse Mitt Romney. And we can at least assure him that much confidence, being that he's been philosophically right over the past years or so. But a lot of people in the media are saying that Mitt Romney has already won the nomination. And I'm saying that's not true because they're not, the person to have won the nomination will not be determined until the day of the convention when the delegates vote to make the decision on who should be the nominee. And whoever the delegates choose, that's who the nominee is going to be. So the popular vote doesn't mean anything under any circumstances other than it's just a straw poll and is added to the election polls and and the primary states only determines the available slots for the for which each candidate has the number of to put go ahead and fill up with their delegates supporters who will be delegates um let me just point out first off, though I'm against prostitution, I think it should be handled on the state level, and so too does Ron Paul. But Ron Paul isn't the type of guy that's going to, you know, flip-flop as opposed to his son Rand. It's his son Rand that's been, that has betrayed the cause of liberty. And it's so confusing, he got people that, like Alex Jones, all mixed up on you know, what the facts are, but I think Adam on RT explained it properly when he said that his son was never like his father. When and that being Rand Paul. Because Rand Paul was they even said on the media was always was identical to his father but somewhat mainstream. When you hear the word mainstream, what comes to mind? And that's what you gotta look at. Is it someone that supports sanctions? Someone because that's what the mainstream ideology is, you know? Uh, someone who supports sanctions and all this stuff. Now, Rand Paul, it's almost like one could call him 
a traitor, and I'm sure he probably got his father's permission. But his father, as libertarian at his father, as libertarian as he is, probably said, you know, Rand, if it's what you want to do, you can go ahead and do it. But I think, I think what Ron Paul should do is go out and say, even though that he loves his son, condemn what it is he's done. Or else this will backfire on him because the majority of his supporters will not put up with it. But let me just make it clear. I think the likelihood of Ron Paul winning the nomination is good. But I think the probability of Ron Romney winning, whether it's rigged or not, is high. Um, so in my opinion, I think it's up in the air. And But keep in mind, by default, if you're looking at the different delegate views, you know, um, Lemon Global political blog, um, they have Ron Paul at 900-something delegates. They have Romney with at least 1,000. And predict that it, it's Ginrich and Santorum release their delegates, that Ron Paul will have 1,000 of Romney's 11,000-something delegates. Um, then if you look at their delegate count.com, Mitt Romney's got like 500 something delegates, well below the amount of delegates ever even talked about in the media, and Ron Paul's got like 136, close to 200 if anything. But one thing for sure, even with 900 something delegates, a big part of whether Ron Paul's going to win the nomination is going to depend entirely on how many delegates Mitt Romney will lose to Ron Paul. That being that nobody is bound to anybody being with Rule 38 in place, and that being that all the delegates are on, will be unbound at the National Convention. So the way I see it is, you know, Ron Paul supporters have filled out almost all the Ron Paul delegate spots, and then they have probably filled up a lot of Romney delegate positions to circumvent Romney supporters from supporting Romney at the National Convention. And this will give them the opportunity to also jump the ship and vote for Ron Paul. And I think it could be a wonderful strategy plan, but I don't think having liberty-minded people supporting Ron, I mean Romney and mainstream candidates to get the, the more true conservative, libertarian, pro-freedom philosophy going. And I would have to say, with Jack Hunter endorsing this strategy, I have to disagree with him on that. Um, but I think that this, I think that nobody knows what the real delegate count is ever going to be until the day of the convention. And that's when the official results will come in for who will support who and what not. But I think that, you know, I think that we have to be vigilant on our point of views here. We got to keep in mind that, you know, supporting these foreign wars, these tortures, holding people for the rest of their lives without due process, without trial, spying on people. I don't, this is something that real conservatism would be, that real conservatives would be opposed to, would dislike. Because if you're a real conservative, you would support things like the state's rights. Um, community, faith, um, you, you know, you would want free markets, free markets, economic freedom, uh, go to war when, when you need to, when declared officially by Congress to a declaration of war, and it's not so much preemptive war, sanctions, and doing whatever you want around the world. We cannot afford to police the world. And if you support things like central banking uh, and stuff like that, that's not what real conservatives support. I'm really sorry to say this. But you often hear the media sit there and say, well, people like Mitt Romney and George W. Bush are real conservatives. When in fact, they're not conservatives at all. They're not even real conservatives. They're neocons. And they're what some people would call communists and stuff like that. I'm not saying they are or aren't communist people, but let me just point out, they're not real conservatives, and neither is Sarah Palin or anybody else here. In fact, when you hear the terms mainstream, this person's a conservative, this person this, what the media lies about. So when they sit there and say Sarah Palin's a real conservative, or Mitt Romney, or John McCain, or Herman Cain, or Rick Santorum, or Newt Gingrich, or anybody, 
anybody else. They're wrong. And they've been saying right from the very beginning, whether it be Donald Trump, Gloria Borgers, CNN, Fox, Bill O'Reilly, CNN, NBC, all these people, that Ron Paul will not win the nomination, and if he does, he will win against Obama. They were saying these type of things with the intention of getting people to be drawn away from Ron Paul to go ahead and vote for Romney or anybody that they approve of. So it's like, you know, and this is and this is what they would say public opinion was in favor of. But you gotta take a look at it. What is public opinion? In my view, public opinion is a way of controlling the narrative. It's a way of saying, well, you know, the militia or the Minutemen or the Tea Party, that their views are aligned with the KKK and public opinion doesn't approve of. Well, as a liberal, and, 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 and different things like that. I'm just using that as an example. But from the libertarian perspective, you'd understand that, you know, that, liber that the libertarians, I guess, believe that each individual opinion is uniquely their own. It is their plural own. Nobody's entitled to the same opinion. There's different aspects between conservatism, libertarianism, and things like that. So, and there's a bit, like I've pointed out in one of my previous videos, there's a difference between political party affiliation and political philosophy. And, um, well, I'm running out of time here, but, uh, I'm Michael Long, and, um, thank you for joining me, I appreciate it.